of what your idea about the machine is and how it might differ from other similar thinkers that have like kind of had parallel ideas. Mm, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. Um, I was about to say it's good to be here. And then it occurred to me that we're in three different places. Um, <laughs> and that's almost, that's almost a symbolic representation of what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. We're in this kind of digital salon and we've never met each other and we're on different continents and we're talking down the wires and mm. it's very interesting, isn't it? I mean, it's a unique situation, this really. There's never been anything like this in history. It's a kind of rapid acceleration. So, yeah, I mean, I've been writing literally two two years this week, actually, since I wrote my first essay in this series I'm writing on Substack. And it's delving into a lot of things about uh, around the, the politics and the culture of where we are and the decline of the West and the kind of fragmentation that I can feel in almost every area of life something i've written about for a long long time i've been writing about i suppose related issues for 20 years or so uh, starting off really with a focus on nature and environmentalism and also globalization uh the kind of globalization of the the capitalist economy and its associated sort of western culture individualism and commerce and really i i what i've been trying to do for two years and it is an experiment because I'm not, I wouldn't present myself as somebody with a great thesis and, and a solution. I'm not Karl Marx, thank God. Um, <laughs> I'm exploring this. I've certainly got my ideas and my opinions, but I don't promise, I, I wouldn't pretend to to have a solution because I'm not sure it's a solvable problem, actually, what we're talking about. It's a situation we're in. But this phrase, the machine that I use, it's not mine. It's a phrase I've I've borrowed or stolen from other writers who've influenced me. Uh, you mentioned Blake, uh, certainly, but also people like D.H. Lawrence or poets like R.S. Thomas. George Orwell used to talk in these terms. So many science fiction writers were writing about this, uh, either using that phrase or using others. And what, what I'm really talking about is a is an intuitive sense that we are we have exited the age of biology and into the age of technology, I think. Um, and this is something that's been building up for a long time. Uh, you mentioned Jacques Ellul as well. Ellul is, is obviously the, one of the great authorities on this, one of the great theorists of, of the technological society. Um, so is Lewis Mumford, is another one I've I've been writing and, and, and writing about and reading in the series I'm writing. And and people like Ellul and Mumford, and particularly Mumford actually, ex expressed the uh, explained that this thing, the machine, the technological society, whatever you want to call it, is very old. It's not something that's just popped up with the computer. So Mumford talks about the first machine society being ancient Egypt. And he said that the Egyptian culture was basically created a machine made of human parts. That was the phrase he used, the human parts mostly being slaves. Um, so we've been creating these very centralized, mechanized, very hierarchical societies for a long, long time, at least since the dawn of, of agricultural civilization. And what we've managed to do in, in modernity is we've discovered fossil fuels which have turbocharged the machine that we had anyway so we can use them instead of slaves we don't need slaves anymore there's still plenty of slaves around but the oil does a more efficient job um so we can burn this stuff and we can we can accelerate and turbocharge this technological society and at the same time i suppose maybe beginning with the invention of the printing press and, and moving forward we've developed this way of seeing and communicating which is which is very distanced and here we are talking, as I said, over over some wires to each other on different continents. And it's that's just an accelerated fossil fueled version of, say, the Gutenberg press, where you could suddenly read the words of somebody in another country you'd never heard of. And that was revolutionary. We know we kind of know the impact of that. And this is revolutionary, too. So the, the long story short is that we are now moving very fast into a very globalized, hyper technological society which is connected with digital technology and very recently these these very fast emerging artificial intelligences so-called which are moving us into this age in which everything is monitored everything is increasingly difficult to it, it's increasingly difficult to distinguish between reality and, and and unreality um we have given enormous power to corporations and states in the abilities they have to monitor us and control us i mean we saw with COVID, for example, the ability to monitor entire populations and control them with digital passports is something that would not have been possible even five or 10 years ago. And it is possible now. 
you can see it notoriously in China with the with the social credit system they have there. So we have this, I think, unprecedented system of technological control, which is enveloping around us. So that's kind of the the economic story and the political story and the, uh, the material story. But I think there's, and maybe this is what we should be talking about, there's a spiritual story too. I know this is mm-hmm. what you wanted to talk about, Nate. There's, 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 I think there's something going on here which is far more than just a discussion about capitalism and technology. I think something's emerging. Um, and there are a lot of guys in Silicon Valley who think the same thing. Now, the difference between me and them is that I think what's emerging is frightening Mm -hmm. and they think it's exciting. Um, But I wrote, I wrote a few years ago, I wrote an essay in which I drew on a book by a guy called Kevin Kelly, who's one of the, uh, one of the great Silicon Valley gurus. And it's called What Technology Wants. It's a very good book, actually. And Kelly says, technology has its own momentum. It has its own telos it's going in a certain direction and it wants something uh he calls it the technium what i call the machine he calls the technium and he says Mm -hmm. that it's also similar to mumford actually the technium has been developing for millennia according to him but now it's found its physical form Um, well we'll it all the way back to the fall yeah well i think this is where i think this is exactly what i what i think we're talking about this is what i've been thinking about a lot since i became orthodox certainly but this is really the story of exactly that. It's the story of the apple. Um, and so, so there's this terrifying phrase I heard. It might be Kevin Kelly's. It might be someone else's. It stuck with me since I heard it. Something is using us to create itself. right? And I think that's what's happening. And I can't prove it. But there it is. I think something mm-hmm. is emerging. And so the question for me is what? And, and then, as you say, what do you do about that? 